Welcome to the Unit 6 Review Packet video. This video will be divided up into three parts, with each part corresponding to one of the topics from Unit 6. In the first part, we're going to address topic 14. Question number one. The angles of a triangle are in the extended ratio 7 to 8 to 15. What is the measurement of the medium angle? Whenever we see an extended ratio or a ratio um, comparing parts of shapes, we can express them as something like 7x, 8x, and 15x. We know that the angles of a triangle have to add to be 180 degrees, so if we were to add together our 7x, 8x, and 15x, then the three of these together would have to make 180. From here, I can solve this equation by combining like terms. 7 plus x plus 8x would be 15x, plus the other 15x would be 30. And then to get x by itself, divide by 30. gives me 6. The question said, what is the measurement of the medium angle? It's not asking me to solve for x, it's asking me to find the value of an angle. So I have to go back to my um, original expression, 7x, 8x, and 15x, and plug in that 6 to the medium value, which would be 8. 8 times 6 would be 48 degrees. Question 2 is a little different. We can still express the parts of our ratio as 7x, 9x and 12x, but in this case we're not adding them together to equal 180 because we're talking about side lengths and not angles. Normally we might be given the perimeter, but here all we know is how big each of these sides are. A slightly different way you can do this problem is instead by looking here and seeing that of these three sides I actually know the value for one of them. BC is 28. The portion of the ratio that goes with BC was 7 or 7x. So that tells me that the 7x part of this triangle has to be 28. To get x by itself, divide by 7. And that's going to give me 4. Now technically I shouldn't have used the letter x here to represent um, the parts of my ratio because I'm also using the variable x over here, and these are not the same. But knowing that this x is 4, Let's me figure out how big each of these sides are. If this one is 7x, 7 times 4 would be 28. That's the one we know. The next one, 9x, this would be 9 times 4, which is 36. And then the final one, 12 times 4, would be 48. That tells me that CA, the side with the ratio of 9, has to be equal to 36. From here, I can just set the side that's 6x equal to 36, divide by 6 on both sides, and that tells me that this x is 6. Number 3. Given triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC, find the scale factor and then solve for AC and ED. In order to find the scale factor, we need to find two corresponding parts where we actually know the value. Now, I know that BC is going to correspond to one of these two from the second triangle, but I'm not sure which. So I'm going to look at the similarity statement and find BC, which are the last two letters, and the last two letters over here are EC. So that means that BC and EC are the corresponding parts, and I have 20 over 16 as my scale factor. Reduced by a factor of 4, and that would give me 5 fourths. Now we have to solve for AC and ED. AC is this side of the triangle on the left. I know that 20 and 16 go together, so we'll call this one X. This side has to go to the 12, so X over 12. Has to equal my scale factor of 5 fourths. Cross multiply, that would give us 4X, 12 times 5 would be 60. Divide by 4. And that gives us our x value of 15, which is AC. To find the other missing side, there's only one we haven't played around with. So here, my ratio would be 10 over y equals 5 over 4. Just like last time, cross multiply. So 4 times 10 would be 40. Divide by 5 on both sides and get 8. Number five, 
Given that triangle ABC is similar to triangle GEO and the lengths below, write an extended proportion and then solve for X. A picture would be really helpful, so I'm just going to draw two triangles and label one ABC and the other one GEO. I don't have to draw them different sizes, but similarity means same shape, different size, so I thought it would be helpful if I did. Next, I'm going to label these with the lengths that we're given here. So we have AB is 12, BC is 15, AC is 20, and GE is 100. Write an extended proportion and then solve for X. EO is my X. To write an extended proportion, we write a proportion with every pair of corresponding sides from the two triangles. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either use the letters that correspond to each of the sides. For example, I know that AB corresponds to GE, so I could write AB over GE. Or alternatively, I can actually plug in the values from the sides themselves and use that in my extended proportion, which is what I'll do here. So AB over GE would be 12 over 100. Next up we have BC, which corresponds to EO, that's 15 over X. And then the last one, 20 over. Now I don't know what side GO is, and I need something to call it, so I'm just going to call it Y. However, they only asked me to solve for X. So here's my extended proportion. To solve this thing, I need to pick out two of these fractions and set them in a proportion. The two obvious choices are 12 over 100 and 15 over X, because I actually know all the values here, and that leaves me with one variable. Cross-multiply, 100 times 15 would be 1,500. 12 times x is 12x. And the last, divide by 12. Which gives me my final answer of x equals 1,500 divided by 12, 125. All right. Our apologies for question six. Question six got a little uh, goofy. Says, complete the similarity statement. Triangle ABE is similar to triangle. It's very difficult to tell, looking at this picture, how these two triangles should be arranged. But what I do know is that angle E and angle C correspond. So if I were to kind of take this top triangle, ABE, and rotate it so that this angle went over here so it was sitting in the same orientation, ABE would look like this. E would go to the tip. B would rotate around to this side, and A would be over here. ACD is already in that orientation. Now that I have both triangles set up so that they're in the same orientation, it's easy to match it, easier to match up the corresponding parts. So here we have triangle ABE. A corresponds to D. B corresponds to A and E corresponds to C. So we would have triangle DAC. Complete the extended proportion and solve for AB. We actually can't do this. The way these two triangles are oriented, there's no way we have the corresponding parts in order to solve for AB. So we're just going to scratch this out and complete our extended proportion. AB are the first two letters, those correspond to DA. BE, second two letters, those correspond to AC. And finally, AE, first and last, would be DC. Solve for X for the similar triangles below, using what you know about similar triangles. First, I need to create a proportion using corresponding parts from each of the triangles. Looking at the triangle on the left, we can see that the side 9 is between the single marked angle and the double marked angle. The corresponding part in the right triangle between single and double would be 4. So the first fraction I'll use in my proportion, 9 over 4. For the second one, I need to create something involving the x. x's corresponding part would be 6. What you can tell is if you start at the single marked, go across the double, and then make a turn, and do the same thing in the second triangle, you end up at x and 6. To solve this proportion, cross-multiply. That would give me the equation 4 times x, 4x, equals 9 times 6, 54. And then divide by 4 on both sides. 
you can either give your answer in fraction form or decimal form. Um, 54 over 4 is a fraction, would reduce to 27 over 2. Part B. These are vertical angles, so I'm going to mark them congruent just to make my life a little bit easier in trying to line up my corresponding parts. 8 is between the right angle and the angle I just marked as a vertical angle. The one in the same position over here between the right angle and the vertical marked would be 12. So I know that 8 and 12 are corresponding parts. That means that x and 10 also have to be corresponding parts, but because I have to keep the same order, this would be 10, left triangle first, over x. Cross multiply. 12 times 10 would be 120. 8 times x would be 8x. And then divide both sides by 8. And end up with x equals 15. See, <clears throat> I'm going to mark my vertical angles with a single mark, and because these lines are parallel, alternate interior angles tells me that these are congruent, and these opposite corners are congruent. I'm going to use the congruency marks to help me figure out which sides go to which. So starting with the top, 3 is between the single and the double marked angle. The one between the single and the double down here is x, so that would give me the ratio 3 over x. On the top, 5 is between the single and the triple. The one between the single and the triple here is 8. So that would give me 5 over 8. Cross multiply. x times 5 would be 5x. 3 times 8, 24. And then divide by 5 on both sides. And you can either leave this as a fraction, 24 fifths, or put it in decimal form. D. We have two triangles in this picture. We have the small triangle on top, and we have a larger triangle that the small triangles are part of. Whenever we're creating por proportions, we need to compare whole sides to whole sides. So in the small triangle, the bottom of the small triangle is 5. Its corresponding part in the big triangle, the bottom, would be 6. In the small triangle, the side here would be 7. But in the big triangle, x does not represent the entire length of that corresponding side in the big triangle. Instead, the big triangle's side is both of these things combined, 7 and x. So at the bottom of my proportion, I need to write 7 plus x, because the length is both of those things added together. From here, cross multiply. 6 times 7 would be 42. And when we cross multiply here, the 5 and the 7x, we have to remember to distribute the 5 to both of these terms, the 7 and the x. One way you can write that is by uh, putting the 5 outside parentheses with 7 plus x on the inside, and then using the distributive property to simplify. 5 times 7 would be 35. 5 times x would be 5x. Oops. From here, subtract 35 on both sides. That would give us 7 equals... 5x, and then divide by 5. 7 divided by 5 would be 7 fifths. E. Here we're going to have the same situation we saw in the other one. We have a small triangle on the top, and then we have a big triangle that it's contained within. Just like last time, We've got to compare whole sides to whole sides. So the bottom of the small triangle would be x. The bottom of the big triangle is 96. The side of the small triangle would be 60. However, for the big triangle, just like last time, I need to add these two lengths together to figure out the entire length of the big triangle side. And that would give me 84. Cross multiply. 84 times x would be 84x. And 96 times 60 would be 5,760. To get x by itself, divide by 84. 
And in the interest of not giving ridiculous fractions as answers, I'll put this one in decimal form. 5,760 divided by 84 should be 68.6. And the last problem for topic 14, F. Using the same idea that I've had all along, I need to compare when we have triangles inside triangles like this, whole sides of the small triangle to the whole sides of the big triangle. In my yellow triangle, the bottom side of this would be 6. The corresponding part from the large triangle, I have to add these two things together. So 6 plus 4.5 will be 10.5. The hypotenuse of the small triangle is x, so we'll put x over, and then the hypotenuse of the large triangle is going to be these two things combined, x and that 5.7. We'll solve this the same way we solved all the others, cross multiply. So 10 times x would be 10.5x. And the 6 has to distribute to both the x and the 5.7. 6 times x would be 6x. And 6 times 5.7, 34.2. We need to get all our x's on the same side, so we'll subtract 6x from both. That gives me 4.5x equals 34.2. <clears throat> Finally, to get x by itself, divide by 4.5. And because the question started with decimals, it's generally as okay if the question starts with decimals to give a decimal as an answer, not a fraction. 34.2 divided by 4.5 would be 7.6.